All right, we are recording. Thank you guys very much for being here on PacWest Bigfoot. <sighs> I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I'm the goofy guy <laughs> from Southern Oregon. And uh, let me just give you kind of an update what's going on. First and foremost, we have a winner for the awesome JRG mug giveaway. Albina, you're going to be getting this as soon as I get your address there. So awesome. Congrats to you. Um, and uh, I'm working on picking something out for next month and no, nobody's getting a brand new car. So hold your horses. Um, but I'm working on that. Uh, anything, uh, geez, any news right now? No, not really any news per se. Um, nothing different is happening right now. As a matter of fact, like I said, I am keeping these things, uh, you know, this information and content and everything, you guys, absolutely free. Um, I am getting uh, quite a few stories from everybody. Thank you guys very much for sending me your encounters and everything else. Um, if you guys are going to, you know, give me a little free license to create backstories around it and make it really colorful and fun, let me know um, if that's okay to do that. Um, other than that, no real news. Um, today we have Kim. And uh, hey. he has uh, something actually was really interesting when I first heard. It. I was like, that's cool. <laughs> I mean, this is like, <laughs> it was like a, almost like a face to face one, huh? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it really was. I mean, I, I think about it right now. And uh, I was just talking to my mother earlier today. And I said, you know, if, if that window on my car had been rolled down, I mean, I could have reached out and touched him easily. He was within inches from me. Yeah, and that, is, just that is something that's yeah yeah i mean it's it's <laughs> and 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 you know to to this day i mean like it, it just drums up all kinds of like emotions in you and and i have to say too that i was like 21 years old when all this went down mm -hmm. and it was like back in 1986 and i didn't tell anyone i mean i told no one i told not my best friend i didn't tell my mother my twin sister i didn't tell my mm -hmm. husband I told, I told no one and, um, because it really freaked me out that bad. Wow. Um, well, you know, I mean, plus really at that point, it like, cause this was back in 86. Okay. Let's, let's go ahead and do <laughs> that. I want to go ahead and let's, let's just jump into your encounter, start off from, from, uh, your sighting and start off from, you know, what you were doing that, that day and kind of lead up to what's going, you know, what you, what you saw. And so let's just go ahead and do that now. Okay. Awesome. Um, well, basically what happened was I was, I was in college at the time and I was finishing up my undergraduate degree um, in business at a, at a local university um, that happened to be in Richmond, Kentucky, um, Eastern Kentucky University. And I lived in central Kentucky um, in a little town that's right outside of, of Lexington, Kentucky, which most people would probably know where that was. Um, and it's in Garrett County. And uh, it is only about 30, 40 minutes south of Lexington. So that's the area in which I grew up, and that's where I lived at the time. And so here I am, I'm a college senior, and I'm finishing up. And I was already married at the time, so I was um, commuting back and forth. And there was a, a really kind of gnarly little country road that you have to drive to get between Lancaster and Richmond. And, and it's still that way to this day, as far as I know. I think there are some other roads that have been built around it, but, um, but this was the road that was traveled then. And, uh, and it was called 52, and you actually connected to 1295 to get into Richmond. And uh, this happened actually on the 52 end of things, only about, I would venture to say, about three miles outside of town, maybe closer to four, because um, there's only about a five-minute drive before you actually hit 1295. And so that's where this happened. And it's a really curvy little road. And, um, you know, being industrious as I was back then, and, and hopefully I still like to think I am today, um, it, it, it was early in the morning because I had an eight o'clock class, which I usually did. And I was preparing for um, some testing and things that were coming up. I think it was midterms, if I'm not mistaken, because this was around the end of March, first of April, around that time period. It was in the spring. And um, um, it was like, dark still you know but it was like I always had my headlights on when I would leave that time of day because typically if I had an eight o'clock class with it taking around 30 minutes um on drive time you know by the time you park your car and get to class and everything most of the time I would take off easily an hour before but I took off a little earlier this morning because I wanted to um get there and have time to review my notes 
um, before any kind of, uh, you know, testing or possible things would come up there. So basically from, I left the house as normal. It's dark. Um, I got my headlights on, but it's, it's that time right before the dawn where you can see some things, but you can't see completely everything. Um, so you definitely need, need your headlights. And the thing about it is, is that I had this little, um, car and, and I guess I'm going to plug my, uh, um, my godfather, Stuart Powell over in Danville, Kentucky, he still runs his business to this day, but I had just bought a car from him, um, that was a little, 1985 and a half Escort twin turbo GT and it was a five speed. So I got great gas mileage and everything, which I needed back then and stuff, but it was really quiet because it was like a four cylinder engine. And, um, I don't know, you know, how much you know about little small towns back then. I know I'm a little bit older than you cause I'm 51 now, but a lot I'm of people 45. back in the seventies, well, okay, but you remember <laughs> a lot of people back in, you don't look that old, David, that's a, that's a plug for you. Yay. But um, in either case, you know, a lot of people back then had the really loud, you know, engines and cars and trucks. And, and especially in a smaller town like that, I mean, like that time of morning, I mean, you're going to see a couple of cars on the road, maybe. Or, um, yeah, I mean, you might see, you may see Farmer Jones quite that early, but maybe not quite, you know. But, uh, but they're loud. The cars and the, and the trucks were loud back then. And most of them had eight cylinder engines or V8s. Mm-hmm. And, and, um, and if not, some of them at least sixes, but I had this little four cylinder. It's quiet. You know, I'm, I'm scooting around those curves, you know, I, I'll probably put it down in second or whatever. And I wasn't going like ultra fast because you can't get going ultra fast on that little road. It's very crooked. And I came around this turn and, and there he was in 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 the road and I mean you know your mind wants to tell you a lot of things because I've come up on a lot of things like over the years like but you would normally come across like say a tractor moving really slow and really have to slow it up or occasionally maybe a deer in the road where you'd have to you know maybe slam on the brakes or whatever Mm -hmm. um or maybe even livestock you know like a cow or a horse or something and I'm trying to tell myself what this thing is because it's huge. And I mean, it's so tall. This thing um, was about eight foot tall. And I mean, it was, and it was dark. And I mean, like, I mean, like to me, it looked like it was black. So here at this point, I'm thinking, oh, dear God, I'm going to hit this thing. And it is big. And this is it. And I'm saying prayers to Jesus at this point. And this thing's eyes look at me and it's not a horse and it's not a cow it it, and the reason I know is because number one like a horse if let's just say it was a really big tall black horse that was just facing me that body wasn't across the road it's just like looking on me they don't look at you the same way this thing looked at me like it was human and it looked at me like Oh my God, what are you doing here? Like, like almost like I'd surprised it. Like I'd really snuck up on it because I guess I just scooted around that corner. Like I said, and there I was and there he was. Well, all of a sudden. I can't hear you. He, you he go. takes could a you, half a step back. back. Up, could you back up just there where you said he surprised you? Cause we kind of lost you there for a second. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. Um, well, it, you know, the the look on his face was it was it was really weird. I mean, it was like a couple of different things going on there. It it kind of because he knows I'm sizing him up, trying to figure out what he is, and you have very short time to do this because I think there's going to be an impact of some kind. Um, because I don't think there's any way I can dodge him because he's that big and um and and i'm thinking to myself still i'm trying to tell myself dear god it's a horse it's just a big tall black horse that's facing me but i know that it's not because the eyes are not on the sides the eyes are looking straight at me like a human would like a man would and uh and they're huge okay and and you can see his eyes get bigger like like a person does when they are surprised I mean like he looked at me and then he looked at me you know and um at that point he takes a half a step back because he knows because he almost froze there for a split second he knows he can't get across the road without it hurting really bad or if not killing both he and I so he takes a half a step back 
and his arms spread out and I'm driving past him at this point thinking, oh, dear God, he's bipedal. Oh, my God, that's not a horse. And I'm thinking all these things. And he's looking down into the car at me. And I'm crooking my head looking up through the side of my driver's side window looking up at him. And we have this kind of like knowing thing like, gosh, we dodged a bullet. You know, he kind of gave me a, a, a look. And, I, and, you know, I can't even describe it. I mean, like, and 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 I'm really inarticulate when it comes to, because I think there were a lot of things behind those eyes. Like number one, he wasn't used to seeing people run up on him that time of day. Yeah. Number two, he didn't hear me coming for whatever reason. I don't know if, if I just, you know, the four cylinder engine, I slid around the corner real quick, whatever, but he was in the midst of crossing that road and he couldn't get it done. And so he saved us. I mean, basically, this thing saved us both by taking that half step back. But he's kind of balancing himself almost on the balls of his feet with his arms spread out. Uh, wide as from fingertip to fingertip is the length of my little car. And looking down into the car at me, like, what is this woman that has caused me this issue, <laughs> you know? And I'm looking at him like, dear God, what are you? You know, I mean, like, I thought you guys were just, you know, hey, are you a Sasquatch? You know, you know, all this stuff is going through your brain and you're not a horse. And uh, <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> oh, my horse. Lord, you're not a horse, man. Uh, but yeah. And I mean, but but the look that he gave me was so human. I mean, it was just animals just don't look at you like that. You know, mm. like whenever you. um you know, you're raised up in a small town. I mean, you're used to seeing like livestock. You, you see cattle come up to the fence and they'll sort of look at you, but they don't. I mean, they know you're there, but they don't care. And and a lot of times when you run up on them in the road, you know, because I've, I've always been lucky enough to dodge them, but I've had friends like hit deer and hit, they, and they, you know, there's, there's not much response there. They either freeze if they're a deer and they're just kind of staring straight forward, um, not knowing what to do, or yeah, they scamper away. And in the, any way, just maybe no, like a little no. bit of an eye or, you know, right. a wince of some there's, kind, but not like a. Yeah, there's none of that. Yeah, yeah, there's none of that. Oh, dear God, woman, where'd you come from? Look. Mm. And, uh, and oh, gosh, I better step out of the way kind of look. And, oh, well, okay, there you go. And, and you know, I think about it many times. If I had been going just a little speck slower, would he have tried to, you know, see me as, like, so much of a threat that he would have just burst that big hand in through that window and grabbed me out of there and I'd never been seen of again? Or, God help me, if I would have hit him. You know, that, yeah, it, you know, there, you know, maybe he would have been able to scamper away from that. I don't know. I mean, or lunge away from that. I don't know what would have happened, but, but uh, I know my vehicle would have been torn up and they would have thought, well, where was the tree in the middle of the road that <laughs> she ran into? <laughs> but, you know, yeah. but, but thank God that didn't happen because, you know, I mean, those little cars, I mean, you can step out of them and, and I'm just five foot six, but I can see over the top of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, back then, I mean, I could see over the top of those cars, but this guy was a good, probably a, at least a yardstick or more taller than the top of my car. I mean, he's peering way down into my car to get a look at me and I'm crooking my neck really far up and, and got my eyeballs turned all the way up to the side and to the left to see him um, to, to make that eye contact. And it's more of a thing that you would do with a human to human contact than it would be mm -hmm. with an animal. And, and I guess that's my point is because, you know, uh, you know, I, some people think I guess cows are kind of spooky and other people think they're completely innocent or whatever. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't see much of anything going on there when I look into their eyes, you know, I mean, they just, they're kind of benevolent souls, I think, but, but, uh, you know, and I'm like a little bit native American, you know, just a tiny bit Shawnee. And so I kind of like have a love for living things, but, um, but this kind of, got a lot of adrenaline going in me and not just because I thought that I was going to hit something because I've almost hit a deer before and your your heart will definitely skip a beat but this is something that you just never forget I mean it's just that picture is painted into my head so hard and I mean it's hardwired and um but yet at the same time it scared me so bad mm -hmm. that I never could tell anyone because 
back then people didn't talk about things like that. They just didn't. And I mean, I'd heard a couple of tales like uh, people say, you know, there's a wild man or there's, you know, be careful. But I just thought it was something that they told the kids, you know, growing up to keep them out of the woods or keep them from, I don't know, parking down on sad lane or something, or, you know what I mean? <laughs> like to keep, <laughs> you know, Make out drive. And, uh, we, exactly. <laughs> and I mean, we, we've got a couple, <laughs> we've got a couple of lakes in, uh, in Garrett County that, with the largest one being Harrington Lake. And, and a lot of people would use it as a resort type thing. And some people live down there. I mean, that's just the way it is, you know? And, uh, so it's kind of like a lake community, um, or a, and and it's uh it's really kind of a neat area that northern Gary County um area. Now where this happened to me was more on the I guess like the east end of town, you know, mm-hmm. but here it was years and years and years later. And I tell you what finally broke the ice was I was sitting around and I guess this was probably around two thousand and twelve and I was watching that show finding Bigfoot with my mom on television one night and we'd watched several episodes and I think Matt Moneymaker and, and uh, that Bobo guy and like all of those guys are really cool. And I mean, and I think it's neat that somebody would devote their life to, um, you know, trying to shed light on, on this particular, you know, animal and everything. But, but yet at the same time, you know, like a lot of these shows, even if for ratings or whatever have you are edited to the fact of where it's not as raw. It's not quite as organic as say like what you and I are doing right now um, for sake of like commercial time and, and like making a show out of things. Um, you know, it's a serious thing because they go into these town hall meetings and half the people raise their hands that they've had ca- encounters or someone very close to them has. Uh-huh. So it's not like just a handful of people across the country have had these encounters that we might just say, OK, chalk it up to the fact those people are crazy and let's go on with life. I mean, because these are doctors, lawyers, Indian chiefs, and these guys, you know, would swear their life on it that this stuff's happening. So I guess that you know, there's power in numbers or there's safety in numbers and they can't lock us all up. So after you see those kind of shows, and I mean, uh, like I said, they, they're, you know, it's serious because that many people have encountered them and, or there wouldn't be a show at all. And uh, there'd be one or two documentaries or something and that would be it. But this stuff could go on and on. I mean, that show could run for whenever, you know, Mm -hmm. but yet at the same time and nothing against Matt and them for doing this because they have to get the ratings and everything. It's almost meant to also look at the same time kind of silly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like not really, but sort of. And and I'm, I'm and I'm, you. and I, think I you know, it's I'm entertaining. Not, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of some of the goofy junk that they do on there, but I, right. I am a huge. They do it for ratings, for, and I get it. Yeah, for just bringing it to people's attention and actually getting some of these things. It's like right. me, you know. I come here and I, I take these brief little encounters and sightings, and I create these backstories in kind of like a storytelling manner. Um, that's right. kind of the entertainment side, whereas there's also the serious side of things. And so kind of meshing them together. Right. And, yeah. and, and they go out and, and they make the little screams and the calls. Mm-hmm. And let's face it, that would work, I think, if an individual themselves or say a son and his uh, dad would go out there and they know that there's Bigfoot in the area because they've seen them many times almost to communicate with them. But you take a camera crew out in the woods. I don't care if it is there. If there are Bigfoot there, they're going to be sitting back there because either kind of laughing at you or they're going to get gone. They're not going to be anywhere near a camera crew that much going on. No, I mean, you know, it, that's just not going to happen. And, and, and I mean, they might come around behind you and try to eat your snacks. I mean, it's like a bear would, you know, uh, if you got donuts or bacon or whatever, I think Bobo was really famous for leaving them out snacks because they loved them. And I'm sure that they do. Um, but yet at the same time, I, I, I think that things like this that happen are, um, and I wanted to tell them about it, like the BFR. I'd actually called them at one time. I got up the nerve enough to call them, but no one ever called me back. So it's probably a good thing. This is the first time I'm telling anybody about this story is you, David. So, I mean, mm-hmm. cause I really like your, uh, I used to listen to the old mystery theater oh, when nice. I was growing up and <laughs> yeah, it kind of gives me the ambiance of that kind of stuff going on. And I think that, that's kind of what I was going for. <laughs> like I said, I was trying to take that kind of like finding Bigfoot with the kind of the entertaining qualities to the actual real stuff. I kind of put it together. Yeah. into a fun little medium that people can have on their lunch breaks or you know in the I, middle of I the dig evening it, man. or something and 
Yeah. So that's I dig why I wanted it. To I think it, it works stuff. for me. Yeah, that's why I wanted all this stuff to be free for good, just so people could. I enjoy doing this. I really do. It's, for me, it's just fun. Yeah, you can it's tell. Interesting. I love it. So, you know. Well, this is kind of leading up to my second encounter. And this, like I said, this is years and years later. And and uh, my mother and I were sitting around and we were watching this show. And little did I know that within a year of when I told her the story of what happened back in 86 um, to me, um, that uh, that something would happen in the next year, but surely the next summer or the next spring, my husband and I bought a, a houseboat and put it down on the docks at one of the marinas there in Gary County, mm-hmm. and um, and we had it just for that summer. We we um you know because you know how they say what your your happiest days when you buy a boat and your second happiest days when you sell it, <laughs> yeah. you know. And uh yeah we we had a crowd we had we had some you know some fun that summer, but it is. You know, it's really expensive to keep something like that up, and and uh, we still live here in Lexington and and commuting down there, you know. But and and plus too, the the summer of 2013 in that area, I don't know if if anybody else would remember this, but it rained and it rained and it rained and it rained and it rained, it rained all summer long. And um, the weird thing about it is, is that never before in I guess the recorded history of the lake had it ever risen so high as it was that summer and we were on the very end of a dock because we had a big couple level boat you couldn't put it under an awning I mean it was a big houseboat and it was on the very end of the dock and about 50 yards away is a a cliff overhang area I'll just say um it's almost a sheer drop off in in spots but there's a little bit of an incline, but it would be hell if you were even repelling to get up to the top of it. And normally, um, like when we had first got the boat and, and it was there, you look way up on the hillside and you can see the tree line and all of that. And then the rocks leading down from it to the lake. But the lake had risen up over 30 feet that summer because of all the rain. And um, so we were way up in the air, yeah, compared to what we normally would be. And that's when the activity, per se, kind of started. And my husband had said to me, he had been doing some work down on the dock for the guy that owned it. And he had spent the night down on the houseboat a couple of different nights when I wasn't there. And he said, Kim, he said, there, I've noticed some things at night that are kind of weird. And like he's part Syracuse Indian and, and things and and I mean he's kind of in tune to things too and um but I wasn't thinking like Bigfoot or anything but he said Kim he goes I'm hearing it tonight just be real quiet and go out and listen and hear what you hear so I went out and um and I listened and I was really quiet to make sure you know and we didn't turn on any lights you know there were maybe a couple lights on inside the houseboat but it's not like I had the outside lights and I was all lit up and playing the music or any of that kind of stuff Mm. and uh but it's weird because from the docks they do play a country music station kind of low at night sometimes during the on season and they keep it kind of playing at night not to where it would bug you or anything you can't really hear it inside the houseboat but when you walk outside on the on the bow you can hear it and um and sometimes that would be playing but it wasn't playing this night because it was right before everybody shows up for the season this was early in the in the season when this happened and he said, just listen to what you hear. Well, it sounded like somebody was up on that cliff, which I knew was impossible for a person to be up there because uh, you just it's a cliff for crying out loud. It's got like a couple of overhangs where there's kind of like crevices back in it, but mm-hmm. that's it. Well, what I heard was this real deep kind of lamenting sound, almost like a chant and almost like... Um, like almost like a funeral march type thing is what it, what it gave me the feeling of, but it was like, um, uh, 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 and it just kept going on and on, but it sounded almost like a song, like a lamenting kind of song for somebody that was very forlorn or sad, or maybe they'd lost somebody close to them, or maybe it was their meditation. Who knows? But it was a very strange sound, and I'm like, what the hell is that? I said, is that a, 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 an old Indian chief ghost up there sitting around his campfire lamenting because he lost his third wife, or what's going on? You know, I mean, because you don't know, I mean, what that is. 
And, and I never heard that again. I have to say, I never heard that again, but it was coming from that area where all the activity happened later. So it made me wonder, could that have been connected? And I'd never really heard anybody else say that they'd ever heard Bigfoot sing, uh, except for I think there's one video on YouTube where they think they caught the sounds of it singing like an ancient song. And, uh, and it sounds like it almost says, thank you at the end. I mean, you guys can, I guess, look <laughs> it up if you want to, but it's really weird sounding, but this didn't yeah. sound like that. This almost sounded male and really low, but it didn't really sound human either. It was very strange. So I just thought either it was, I mean, you tell yourself all kinds of stuff. It's the wind, it's this, it's that, you know, but you know better. So that's something that's kind of unexplained. Well, later on, a couple of weeks down the road, there was a light and I don't really know what this has to do with it because um, I've heard a lot of people say that there are alien things connected with the Bigfoot sightings. And I don't know if this would be in that kind of, or that could fit into this kind of explanation or not. But have you ever heard of like the, uh, the lights that show up on that mountain up in North Carolina that it's, yeah. I think it's like from the 1920s or thirties. Yeah. Like on occasion, even to this day, people will see a light and it just glows and it shows up for any number of amount of time and people have filmed it and taken pictures of it, but nobody can really figure what it is. And if they even go to search for it, they never can find anything. Uh, but there have been a lot of UFO encounters around that area throughout the years and they don't know if it's connected or not. Well, we saw this light coming from the same area on the cliff side of the about, like I said, 50, 60 yards from the boat, you know, on this cliff area. And I'm like, dear God, either every lightning bug in the whole damn place <laughs> has gotten together and decided to make a ball. I mean, because it would have had to have been that big. It would have it would been big. Enough. It wasn't a flare from a boat that got stuck in the trees and went off. It wasn't that color. There weren't any of those. Kind, it was kind of a bluish, whitish with almost like a tinge of yellow and, and down there, I mean, it's not to say that there couldn't be like Fox fires or some kind of gas emitting from the stone or the ground, but this was kind of up on the cliff, like where strictly the rock would be. And it was just blowing and it just stayed that way for, I, I would guarantee you that it was a couple of hours um, that we noted this, but there was nobody else down on the docks that night. There was nobody that we could say, Hey, look at that. What isn't that weird? Well, what happened when everybody kind of shows up for the summer and even though it rains a whole lot uh, and the lake grows 30 feet, we started noticing a bunch of weird stuff happening. And like, for example, it, even during the day, we would be on the boat and we would be outside doing whatever, you know, fishing off the side, feeding ducks, whatever. And it, all of a sudden, you would hear this tearing through the the tree line that it looked like King Kong would have had to be going through there because if it had been a group of deer and they were spooked by something, um, they wouldn't have been able to tear up Jack the same day. And it would get from point A to point B so daggone fast, but the whole tree line was shaking as it would go through. I mean, you could hear branches clipping and snapping, and it was just really wild. And I said, what the hell is that, Alex? Because if it had been a wild boar, if it had been something like that, or even like a, a little wildcat or something like that, because there are some obviously wildlife there, it would have done things differently, and it wouldn't have been that much activity going on towards the top of the tree line the way it was when this thing would go through. Well, then all of a sudden, we noticed that as our boat rose up, and we're almost across from this tree line now, in fact, we are, uh, instead of being down in a little valley where if in fact this thing existed, it would be looking down on us, all of a sudden, we're in his face, mm -hmm. and he didn't like it, because we're standing on the boat one night, and all of a sudden, these really sharp little rocks start flying in between us. Well, the first one that goes across the bow of the boat, it skips, just like when you're trying to skip a stone across the water. And I said, where did that come from? <laughs> and I mean, like, we're just looking at the stone and my husband goes over and he picks it up and it's a, it's a little rock with sharp edges. And uh, we just kind of looked at each other and just kind of shrugged our shoulders. Well, a couple of minutes later, here comes another one whizzing in and then another one. 
And, uh, sure. and, you know, after like three or four rocks being thrown at you, it's no coincidence. This thing's going on, you know, I mean, yeah. and, and we never heard any noises like, wow, you know, or anything like that. Uh, I think it just wanted to see what our reaction would be. I'm not real sure, but, um, but I do know that that happened. And until the water resided that year, you know, until it started going down, then the activity stopped and we never, we never, you know, heard anything or saw anything else. But those are the weird things. If that strikes a chord with anybody or that's similar to their encounter, um, either because of the light showing up, the, uh, the lamenting chant noise, uh, the rock throwing and or it breaking through the tree line the way it would sometimes almost like it was chasing something, possibly a deer, um, or it was just pissed off or something. Uh, Cause some of this, like I said, would happen in the middle of the day. But I have to say there's one other incident that really made my blood go cold that happened. There was a duck and he was a little green headed mallard that um, I had fed mm -hmm. all all spring and summer long and he was like almost like my little pet he would always come up first and i'd give him like little bread or crackers or whatever i had and he was just the cutest and uh and he'd grown into a really beautiful duck and uh and i have to say that one morning i saw something floating kind of on the water or just right below the surface and i was like what is that and i, I was like is that a dead fish what is that and i swear that um <laughs> Somehow or another, whatever had happened, this poor duck um, was decapitated, and its head was floating across to the the, uh, the way to my. It was almost like he ripped the head off of my pet duck, knew and had watched me feed it, and then just kind of sent it over, you know, like to where it would like basically run into my boat when I was outside, so that it would send a message to me that you know, Hey, I'm going to kill your little duck. You know, I'm going to get you and your little dog too, or something. But, uh, but that it broke my heart, but I am so certain that something that could just rip the head off of a duck like that, you know, and send a message has to have some kind of intelligence behind it. Those are real threats in real time that don't happen from things like wild boar or, um, or a wild cat yeah, or whatever. I, uh... Uh, you know? I'm, yeah, like like I said before, I'm I'm a creationist, so I'm I'm really into science and really into biology and all that. And um, I do believe that hmm. there are certain animal species out here that do have a certain level of intelligence, different levels, I think. And I do think that um, you know primates, things like that, do have a. Um, you can find species of whales and dolphins and whatnot that have a pretty high intelligence level in. Right. Um, so I, I think that they're pretty intelligent. Yeah. Personally. Yeah. So, but um, did you, I, uh, did I you really, get any, any sort of like uh, real quick kind of um, when you, when you saw this thing, I mean, was it like hair or fur? Um, you know, oh, any yeah. sort of face? I mean, I mean yeah. can you describe a little bit of the, the visual on that thing? Yeah, I mean, like, other than the fact that it was at least eight feet tall, um, it was very dark. I mean, it would be what I would consider black, because like I said, I, I thought it was a black horse at first, like a really tall, you know, like a, that's what I wanted to tell myself it was anyway. And um, because it's not really like there's bear around that area. I think there have been some, like, mm -hmm. more since that time, you know, like black bear and things like that, but there wouldn't have been in that area at that time. And um, and besides, I mean, like being close to Tennessee, we'd go down there all the time for, uh, you know, go to Gatlinburg and the Smoky Mountains and, you know, rent a cabin. And so I'd, I'd been around there too, you know, even though they really weren't indigenous to my area. Mm -hmm. um, so this was no bear and this was no piece of livestock either. But uh, it was, um, I mean, he was bipedal. Like I said, he was, he was standing upright. Uh, and he, his face, like you could see, his eyes were huge. Okay. His eyes were really big. I mean, I swear they looked as big as, as my fist to me, they looked that big. And, um, so, uh, the face didn't seem to have quite as much hair. The body was all covered with hair and it was very thick. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the face was more like, um, you could see some features. You could see a little bit of features. It was dark. Okay. Yeah. And it was dark enough to where I had my headlights on, but you could see a little bit, but you're so shocked at the time. And it was, and you're still like reeling in your head. Like, what the heck is this? You know, to where you do, uh, you do remember, but it's, it's like, 
um, it's more the eyes that really have you. Cause I mean, I just locked into those eyes, but I could see what was around it. I mean, it was, um, the head to me looked more rounded than what people explain, um, out in your neck of the woods, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. You guys talk about the cone a whole lot and I didn't notice anything like that. I mean, like it, it didn't seem like it now it very well could have, but it didn't seem to be more cone shaped. It, It seemed to be, uh, a little bit more rounded than that, you know, I mean, like not quite human either, but, um, you know, but it was, uh, it was not coned that I can remember. Um, but it was dark. I mean, it was, it was covered with, uh, black fur all over. It didn't seem to be spotted like, you know, part of it gray or anything like that. It was, it, it must've been a, 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 I guess a fairly young male Bigfoot, um, or that's what it appears mm-hmm. to be. Um, I didn't see like, you know, how people will say, well, they had breasts, it was a female, you know, or it was a a little shorter or it was a, now this was like, um, this was, I I believe this was male. I just have that knowledge. I don't know. It's like when you you just kind of know you're faced with something that's as big and, and crazy as it does get for that species, (laughs) you know, it it was just, (laughs) yes. And I mean, like it's, it is, it's weird. It's like. Um, and, and if anybody's ever had that close of an encounter, like where they're that close to where they get that eye contact thing going on, where it's looking at you and you're looking at it, that's, that's when you've got these, um, it's not really like a telepathy thing, but it's something strange that does happen to you. It's almost like not really like a magical experience, but definitely supernatural. Like you don't feel like that it's like, you know, it's real and it's in the physical realm, but it, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's a spiritual experience because I love Jesus. You know, I don't want to make it sound blasphemous or anything like that, but it is something to where it's you feel like you're not just something that is just quite... so uniquely highly intelligent that it does, exactly. it does catch you off guard that it seems like it's, it does. you know, it's just, yeah. <laughs> it's know? mind blowing. It really it is. is. And you can think about it over and over and you'll remember you know, like, like, uh, like you can just close your eyes or not close your eyes and you see those eyes looking at you and you know that, that it wasn't just, you did not have just an encounter with a regular animal, you know, this and, um, and, but the closest thing that you could explain it to of what we have seen, um, would be like an in between gorilla man thing. You know, I mean, like, you know, some of the gorillas that you've seen that have the really dark, fur on their bodies, you know, the really dark hair. Yeah. It was something similar to that, but built differently. Um, it didn't have that um, that same look to the face, but almost up around the brow area where the eyes are, there is something similar to that going on. Okay. Um, but, uh, but the, the, uh, Just a really the, heavy brow it, line. Yeah, it, it did have a heavy brow line. And yeah, because that's what you notice when the, the eyes look like they're just big balls set in a, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> set in a heavy brow line. Exactly. And uh, it didn't open its mouth, you know, like how people say they saw its teeth or they saw, I didn't see mm-hmm. anything like that. Um, I didn't see anything like that at all. Because uh, then that really would have freaked me out. I mean, but yeah. um yeah. But no, I didn't see. <laughs> but when it raised out its hands, when it raised out, and I saw the magnitude of how big of a wingspan this thing had, it really blew my mind. I mean, it was amazing. I mean, it had to have gone from one end of my car to the other. Jeez. It was insane. I mean, to me, each arm looked like it was four foot long. Yeah, what it, kind it of car was insane was looking. It was a little Ford Escort. It was called yes. a GT Twin Turbo. Yeah, it was just are. a little, a little Ford, Ford Escort. Escort. The yeah. GTs, yes. I remember what those are. Right. Yeah, because my buddy right. had one back then, and I'm telling you that it, I'm standing up in the video camera right now. I would say the top probably comes up to about the bottom part of my neck there. So if it's exactly. another yard up above that, I'm basically five yeah. seven. So we're talking – yeah, you're talking about eight feet somewhere right around there. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly because I, I had actually done that before. I'd walked out of my car and looked over the top of it trying to gauge where about did I see those eyes peering down into it. And you got to understand, too, this thing stepped, took a half step back, 
it's kind of standing up on the balls of its feet with its arms uh, waiting, at, waiting for me to get past it. So it's kind of balancing itself and it's like looming. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't even really except the. Hold on. You disappeared. Are you there? Trying to look down into the car oh, to see who has done this. To me. Well, I kind of miss you there for a second. <laughs> well, I mean, what I'm saying is very well. Are you walking around? Yeah, I was there for just a second. Oh, okay. I sat back down. Can you hear there, me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Cool. All awesome. right then. Um, but yeah, I was like I said, I'd actually done that little experiment myself. You know, like to myself, just kind of stood, you know, like looking over my car. Cause like I said, I'm five foot six and I can, yeah, I could look over it easily. You know, like it, it probably came up closer to my mouth or something like that, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, or at least I could have probably set my chin on top of it and, and, uh, looked over it cause they were small cars. They weren't huge. No. Um, it's a little car actually, yeah. but, um, but boy, did this thing ever dwarf it. Mm, my huh. Lord. Ah, but uh, if unless yeah, I don't know if you have any other questions for me, but um, not really. And, and not I know really. I'm probably I'm just like I, to bring I know I'm probably forgetting. Them, yeah, let them share their uh, their encounters and stuff, sightings or experiences. And uh, I want to say thank you so very much for that. And hang out for yeah. just a moment. Yeah. Um, and uh, as I kind of close up here, I want to say thank you guys very much for listening in. If you are not subscribed to the YouTube channel, get subscribed. If you're not subscribed to PacWest Bigfoot, get subscribed over at PacWestBigfoot.com. You can run over there and you can sign up where it says join the clan. And uh, actually, I like to give a little something uh, free away every single month, whether it's, you know, some stickers or a little poster or a coffee mug or something, you know, a little uh, book. I got a friend, William Jevening, if you guys know him, I got some uh, books coming my way autographed uh, signed by uh, William and I'm planning on giving one of those away here pretty soon as well so uh, with that thank you guys very much for being on here and Kim hold on for one second